if you have a need to create multiple configurations of an assembly, design tables can help you automate this process. Using design tables at the assembly level is very similar to using them at the part level. The primary differences lie in the parameters that can be controlled at the assembly level. An assembly design table can control two categories of parameters, component characteristics and assembly features, including mates. Component characteristics include state, either resolved or suppressed, visibility, and configuration. Assembly features include state, resolved or suppressed, as well as dimensions. There are a few more items that can be specified through an assembly design table, but these are by far the most commonly used. For a complete list, see the SOLIDWORKS online help. Now let's turn to an example. This assembly currently has only the default configuration. I'll be using the design table to generate four additional configurations. The first step is to insert a new design table. This is done using the Insert drop-down menu, and under Tables, select the design table. The Design Table Property Manager appears. As with part design tables, you have the option to start with a blank table, an automatically created table, or an external table you've created previously. In most cases, you'll likely be using the blank or auto create option. My preference is to use the auto create option for two reasons. This option will allow you to include any assembly level dimensions, including distance mates, and it will also format the first row in the table so parameters are rotated 90 degrees. I'll leave the remaining options at their default and click OK to create the table. The values of three distance mates are available to be included in the design table. I'll select all three and click OK. As I mentioned earlier, there are four configurations of this bookshelf assembly I'll be creating. Two wide versions and two narrow versions, each with single and double shelf arrangements. In the first column, I'll type in the names of the configurations I'll be creating. Wide single. Wide double. Narrow single. And narrow double. Next, I'll address the width of the bookshelf by entering values for the dimension D1 at width. Notice this dimension is easy to identify because the distance mate was renamed to width. Otherwise, it would appear as D1 at distance 3, or some other arbitrary name. The wide configurations will have this distance set to 42, while the narrow configurations will be set to 36. Next, I'll fill in the bottom shelf height. In the single configurations, this will be set to 20. In the double configurations, this will be set to 16. The top shelf height will be set to 12 in all configurations. Keep in mind that in the single shelf versions, the top shelf will not be present, so the values specified here are not relevant. In fact, I could have left this distance blank for the single configurations. SOLIDWORKS would have interpreted this as zero. Be careful, though. Some distances do not allow values of zero and will cause errors if left blank. The next item I need to address is the state of the top shelf component. As you might guess, the single configuration should have this component suppressed. To add the component to the table, I'll highlight the header cell in the next column and double-click the top shelf in the graphics area. This will populate the cell with the appropriate syntax to control this component's suppression state. Acceptable values for state are resolved or suppressed. You can also indicate these values by entering the letter R or the number 0 for resolved and the letter S or the number 1 for suppressed. At this point, I've addressed the width of the bookshelf, the number of shelves, and the position of the shelves. To accept these values, I'll click in any blank area of the graphics window. A message alerts me that four configurations have been created. Let's go to the Configuration Manager and review what we've done. 